Hey there, it's Brie, and this is my beginning of the year book unhaul. This is my first time doing an unhaul. However, just randomly on a whim today, I was going through three of my bookshelves. I have a lot of bookshelves, by the way. I was going through three of my bookshelves and just started pulling off books that I'm probably not gonna get to, or I read and I didn't like, or I had duplicates of, and I ended up with a giant bag full of books that I need to unhaul. And typically when I unhaul books or I get rid of books, which actually happens quite a bit because my mom gives me a lot of books, and if I don't like them and my sisters don't want them, I will usually do this with the books. So I'll either bring them to Books A Million if they're in good condition and they will do the book buyback so I get a little cash for that. Or I bring them to the paperback exchange where I can exchange them for credit at the store or I just donate them to the library. I wish there was a way that like I could somehow send these to people. Like if I did a video like this and you guys wanted some of these books, I wish there was a way I could just send it to you. But I hate to make you pay for shipping and I know I can't afford to pay for shipping for all of these. I don't know if that necessarily makes sense. I don't know. If you have an idea of how that would work, let me know. <laughs> but anyway, because I have so many books here, I and I will probably have way more once I go through all of my bookshelves, I think I'm going to break this up into a few different videos, and I'm also not going to talk about each book for very long, just because this video would be like five years long. First book that I have is Anywhere But Here by Mona Simpson. I'm getting rid of this for two reasons. One, I will probably never read this book. I watched the movie and two, I hate, I hate <laughs> when books take away the original cover and put on like the TV or movie like poster and change that and make that the cover. Like that drives me so crazy because I don't know, it's just awkward and weird and I don't like it. And I don't even remember where I got this book, but I have a feeling I got this from a used bookstore probably. I am also getting rid of Nine Women, One Dress by Jane L. Rosen. Honestly, I'm just, I'm not super into women's fiction. Really the only women's fiction writer that I read is Catherine Center. And I don't know, it just doesn't doesn't really appeal to me. It's not something that I am into, so getting rid of this one. And to be fair, if a women's fiction book is super popular or it has a premise that I'm really, really intrigued by, then I will read it, but this one just doesn't. Next is Muse by Alexa Riley and Fiona Davenport. I read this recently when I was going through and reading all those super short books on my bookshelf, and obviously this is a super short novella. And unfortunately, this one does all the things that I hate that romance novellas do, which is like insta-love, like love not even insta lust it's insta love and it just rushes through everything it has surprise pregnancy it's just not good but the premise of it was really really good and it made me so sad that i didn't like this one but and it's also sad because it's also signed by the author my mom got this from shameless book con normally i will keep books if they're signed especially when they're personalized to me but i just deeply did not like this book next is one that has maybe one of the cheesiest covers I've ever seen, and that is For the Love of Venice by Donna Jo Napoli. This book cover does something that I hate, which is, I think it's just, this is just a sign of the times. Like this is just because of when it came out, this was the look that was popular. But I hate when they have like, you see people's faces in covers. I don't like to see people's faces in covers unless they're like turned away. And I typically will prefer like, if you're gonna have someone, like a person on the cover, like cut off their head or have them in shadow or something. But this is just super awkward and what is, he looking at also <laughs> I just don't understand because <laughs> he's like not looking at her he's just like looking just past her what is happening in this book cover <laughs> So that's a no. I'm also getting rid of The Center of Things by Jenny McPhee. And although I am intrigued by this cover, it just doesn't seem like, it's a metaphysical thriller. Interesting. Jenny McPhee brings the insights of quantum mechanics to bear upon love, stardom. Yeah, it's stardom. I don't like books about famous people typically, with the exception of very, very few books. Like To Love Jason Thorne was a book about famous people that I like. And Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. But other than that, hard pass. I'm gonna run out of space on my whole bed is going to be covered in books by the time I'm done with this. All right, next is 32 going on Spinster, Becky Monson. And I'm like, I'm 34. Why are we going on Spinster? I'm offended by that. Not really. Yeah, this is another like women's fiction chiclet type thing. And I'm just, I'm not super into it. And this book, I've had this book for so freaking long. I never read it. And I just don't even understand what this is or what it's about. But it's called Tell Me Lies. It's a novel by Jennifer Cruz. This book is in terrible condition, by the way. I'm probably just 
have to donate this to the library, but I have no idea what this is about. Don't tell me about the secrets. Don't tell me about the cheating. Don't tell me about that hot summer night in the back of your car. Tell me lies. Nope. These two books are books that I got from my mom, and I don't even know if she even liked these, but she gave them to me. And it is The Visitor and The Rescue by Laura Wick. And just like, just honestly looking at the cover, it, this is just not my thing. You know how sometimes you can just look at a book cover and be like, mm, no, not for me. This is these books. Next is The Rosie Project by Grames Simpson. Graeme? 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 Simpson? Anyway, this book I got because I really like, I think, what is it called? Is it called Love Rosie or something? I liked the movie that was based on this book, but I just don't see myself ever reading the book just because I know what happens in it because I saw the movie. Pass on that. Give it to someone who might actually read it. And then this one is just another book that did not look like anything I would be interested in. It's called Maine by J. Courtney Sullivan. And I think the only reason, oh look, it has the deco edges. The only reason why I really kept this is because I have such a fascination with Maine. My mom, we lived in New Jersey, but my mom used to travel to Maine and she had a lot of family there. And the way she always talked about Maine has always made me want to visit. But that's why I kind of hung on to this book, but I really don't see myself reading it like ever, like ever. I'm like Taylor Swift. All right. Next is The Hospital Bed for Bad Poets by J.C. Hallman. I don't even know what this is about. Full of cryptic twists, philosophical quandaries, and fabulous turns, J.C. Hallman's stories are modern riddles with no easy answers. No. Next is How to Paint a Dead Man by Sarah Hall. I know nothing about this, but again, the cover, just looking at the cover, I'm like, meh. It says it's invigorating. This deeply sensual novel is what you rarely find an intelligent page turner, which perversely you also want to read slowly to savor Hall's luscious way of looking at the world. That was a convoluted blurb. So it's about a dying painter, a blind girl, a landscape artist, and an art curator. No, I'm disinterested in that. And then I have a library binding version of P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. And the only reason why I'm getting rid of this is because I ended up buying the box set for the series. So I'm just, I'm getting rid of this because I have a box set. I was like slowly but surely trying to collect those. But when I saw that the box set was on Book Outlet, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get that. All right, this is a book that I got a little overexcited about when I saw it at my library bookstore. It's been sitting on my shelf for a couple years and I'm like, why did I get this? I'm never going to read it. It's Lovers and Players by Jackie Collins. And I remember I looked at, well, first of all, there's a giant picture of her on the back, which I've never been a fan of that. Like when authors put their picture on the back that big. It's weird to me. Apparently she's pretty popular. I don't really know anything about her. There were a lot of negative reviews for this book too, and it just doesn't really seem like something I would like. I thought I liked the cover. I don't know. I like the colors. I like the combination of pink, white, black, and then this like metallic silver, but meh. This next book is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This is brand spanking new. It has never been cracked open. It's in gorgeous, perfect condition. And the only reason why I'm getting rid of this is because I, I didn't have The Hate You Give previously, but Book Outlet had the box set of this and The Hate You Give. So I ended up getting that. So I don't need an extra one of these. So I'm sure someone else will want this. I can actually bring my bag up here. Next is P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Aaron. And this, I watched the movie and I really liked the movie. But this book is huge and I just don't see myself reading it because I don't know if I want to be that sad again. <laughs> I'm going to pass this on. I do really like the cover actually. This next book is Straight Talking by Jane Green. And actually I'm getting rid of two books by Jane Green. It's Bookends and Straight Talking. I read one of her books and I really didn't like it. And then I tried reading another one and I really didn't like it. And it's so sad because they seem like book that I would enjoy. And they see, I see these all the time in used bookstores for really, really cheap. And I'm always tempted to buy them. But then I remember that I don't like her writing. So I end up not buying them or buying them and they sit on my bookshelf and I glare at them every time I see them. So we're getting rid of this. The next book I'm getting rid of is, this is a library binding version of Jerry Spinelli's Star Girl. I read this recently and I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. And I didn't like it enough to keep it on my bookshelf. And it's not like beautiful enough to keep on my bookshelf, not to be, you know, shallow. Another one that's like a women's lit Friday morning something. Okay, can we talk about why? Why would you put a sticker right over the title? I hate stickers on books. 
Can we start a petition? Friday morning at bargain priced is what this is called. Friday morning at nine by Marilyn Brandt. I don't know, like honestly, some of these could be really, really good, but I'm just not, just not into it. All right, next is Clam Jam by R.C. Bolt. This is a book that my mom got at Shameless Book on a couple of years ago and R.C. Bolt was there. And I'm getting rid of this because I'm reading the synopsis for this and I'm like this could be potentially not good like it if it's not done well it could be a little bit shady because I think I want to say it's a straight guy who's pretending to be gay and that makes me uncomfortable I worry a little bit so in the guy's perspective it says the day I interviewed for the room to rent everything changed I knew I had met the girl except there was one small problem she didn't want anything to do with men I recognized the top-notch force field when I saw one she'd been burned badly and didn't want to deal with a heterosexual guy as a roommate. I could have turned around and found another place to live, but I want to live with her, so I had to go undercover. So he's pretending to be gay so that he can live with her, and she doesn't want to live with heterosexual guy. Like, that just seems kind of messed up to me, so I'm gonna pass on that. Then I got Girl Boss. This never had a cover on it, so I don't know why I got it, but it's by Sofia Amoruso, and I just don't see myself reading this one. I'm just deeply uninterested. And His to Command by Opal Car Caru. Caro? Caru? <laughs> this is a book. I found this one at my library bookstore for super cheap, and I found this one and then another one by this author, and I read the other one by this author, and I really, really didn't like it. I read, like, her dirty fantasies. The only thing I could keep thinking about, not even, like, the storyline, but I was just thinking, I was like, this is this author's fantasy, and it just made, I don't know, I just, I couldn't get that out of my head, and so I just, I'm thinking this author is probably just not for me. I am making the worst <laughs> mess behind me. This is gonna be fun to clean up. Next is The Vow. I saw this movie in the theater and I didn't like it because it had like a very open ending. And then this is another case of they changed the cover and put the movie poster as the cover. I don't like it. Next is Young Widows Club by Alexandra Kautz. This is a book that my mom gave to me and I actually really like this cover. I love how it has this lace over here. This seems like a really sad book and I don't know if I'm into that. It's like a women's fiction but then it's also sad and I'm just, nope. Next is Proof of Heaven by Mary Bargained Priced because again, we've covered the author's name this time. By Mary Curran Hackett. I think the cover is beautiful. I love this actual picture, but it just doesn't look. It says, a mother's faith, a child's courage, a doctor's dedication, a moving and thought-provoking tale of hope, love, and family. I think this is a Christian novel too. And that's not really my cup of tea. And then Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. This was also turned into a movie and I just, movies and book about this particular topic it takes place around 9-11. Um, I can't do it. Like it's too much for me. I can't handle it. And then The Atlas of Love by Lori Bargain Priced. Lori Frankel. It has a baby on the cover. All right. <laughs> so here's the thing. I have two young children. I love my children. I love the children that I'm related to. I love my friends' children. I don't like reading books about children. Like when, I don't like like the single mother, single father, nanny, like any of those, that's just not my thing. I'm not, I just, it's not my thing. Maybe I'm a horrible mother, but I don't, yeah. So this has a baby on it and it just doesn't seem like it's for me. And then last but not least, look at us, we made it through. It is Embrace Me by Roberto Lato. And I got this from the library bookstore. I don't know why. This seems like this clearly was written quite a time ago. It looks like it's a erotica. Astonishing sexual encounters. The fact that this cover just looks like the date it was published is just turn off for me. So, all right guys, that's it. These are all the books that I'm getting rid of. And like I said, that's only from three bookshelves. I have many more, many more bookshelves to go through. So there might be several more videos like this if you enjoy them. I will do more of them. And as always, happy reading. Bye.